Good evening, everyone. We have a quorum here, and we're about to open the meeting. And it will be open with uh, we will open the meeting with an invocation and a pledge. And I have the pleasure of doing the invocation today. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to come together in fellowship, friendship, and be able to take care of the business of the city. We thank you for the wis wis for the wis your wisdom and give us the knowledge to be able to accomplish those. We thank you for all the great things that you've done for our city. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to keep us in your perfect peace. And we'll just be careful to give you the praises. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <laughs> okay. At this time, we're all, we'll recognize our visitors and we'll have the comments. Are we going to do the comments we now? Wait. Public public comments. Oh, we don't have any public comments. And what we're going to do is start with our addendum, uh, agenda, which would be business, under business number one. Consider and approve removing from the table resolution of the city of Crockett, Texas for the exemption of the municipal property taxes for the Renaissance Treehouse Academy, a qualifying child care facility under the tax, tax code and 11.36, 2024. Council? May I, I consider that we approve removing from the table a resolution of the city of Crockett, Texas for the exemption of municipal property taxes for the Renaissance Tree, Tree House Academy, a qualifying child care facility under the Tex, Texas Tex Code uh, 1136, 2024. Second. Okay, it's been moved in second. All in favor? Motion carries. Item number two. Consider and approve a resolution of the City of Crockett, Texas for the exemption of the municipal property taxes for the Renaissance Treehouse Academy, a qualifying child care facility under the tax, tax code and 11.36-2024. Council? I really I went and did, uh, did my, the research that I told you that I would do and um, to get a under, better understanding of uh, the tax exemption. And actually I found out it's not just a tax, it's not considered a tax exemption, it's actually a reduction, so tax reduction. So um, with that being said, um, uh, and I have you know, reconsidered uh, my thoughts um, due to the research that I've done. Um, I'm asking as well that uh, when we, um, so my motion is um, to consider and approve a resolution of the city of Crockett, Texas for the exemption of municipal property taxes for the Renaissance Treehouse Academy, a qualifying child care facility under the tax, Texas tax code 1136. Second. Okay. This has been moved and second. All in favor? Motion carries. And now we'll go back to our original uh, agenda. Item number one, regular session, uh, approval of minutes for regular session July 1, 2024, 9 o'clock a.m. and July 1, 2024, 6 o'clock p.m. I make a motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, move us with to our reports. Item number two, police department manpower and criminal incident report for June 2024. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Administrator. Hey, Clayton, if you don't mind, can you push the button to turn it on? Oh, that's the tree house again. It's a police department manpower and criminal activity report for June of 2024. Total of 16 officers worked 2,539 hours, responded to 452 calls for service, 
It investigated 12 traffic accidents, made 33 arrests, issued 252 traffic citations, completed 80 reports, responded to 29 alarm calls, 26 of those were false alarm, three of those were not. Uh, below you'll see a breakdown of our report. I'll entertain any questions you may have. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Chief. You gonna be able to Well, we'll let you off easy tonight, Chief. <laughs> you coming Sunday? Yes, I will be. Okay. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Our next item, as soon as I turn to the right page, um, the fire department monthly activity and status report for June 2024. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, City Administrator. For the month of June, uh, we had a total of 47 calls, City of the, or 40 of those being in the city, uh, seven of those being in our county response area. Uh, we're just happy that we did get the rain at the first part of June, so that's why our numbers were down, because we're not in that drought like we were last year. Uh, there's a further breakdown in front of y'all. If y'all have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Well, we're glad that the rain has come. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And moved us to another level. Uh, does anyone else have any? For the I chief? have one more thing. Okay. Uh, we were, uh, every two years we get inspected by the Texas Commission on Fire Protection, that who's, uh, monitors us, make sure we're doing the right thing, and just let y'all know that we pass with fine color. Well, thank you. Good deal. We want to know that our fire department is in good shape. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. At this time, it brings us to our business presentation and discussion of upcoming Texas Water Development Board grant and loans. Uh, John? Mayor and Council, um, we have good news tonight. We have <clears throat> a couple items that. Um, We've also invited our financial advisor, Mr. Ben Rosenberg, here to speak on, and he has some handouts uh, to provide counsel. However, um, the work of the last couple of years has, uh, has finally come to fruition where we're, uh, we received last week or maybe the week before. Thank you. Uh, good, no, uh, good news that uh, we've been approved uh, grant funding as well as some reduced uh, loan and uh, or no interest loan. Um, for a couple of our water and wastewater projects. And then uh, Ben here will kind of go over some of that with us. Great. Hello, Mayor and Council. Ben Rosenberg with U.S. Capital Advisors here. Glad to be here tonight. Uh, sometime Christmas does come in July, so we're going to go through that. Uh, Friday, I apologize, though. My, my handout is not in order because on Friday I lost my cell phone. I didn't have any air condition, so I didn't get to coordinate with John the order of the presentation. So we're going to skip around a little bit and go right to the good news, okay. starting on page, my handwritten page on the bottom, which is starting on page uh, 16, 17. And uh, Texas Water Development Board makes loans to cities for water and sewer projects. And we started this project February, March of 2023, the state fiscal year 23-24. And the city was on that list ranked very highly on the clean water, which is the sewer project. That project total is about $11.2 million. The state has, uh, they have not awarded yet, but they, the, this funding determination letter, which is 17, page 17, uh, is where they're gonna offer $7.3 million of free money, grant, free money, and a $3 million zero interest loan. So the, uh, the only portion that the, and then a $1.3 million uh, market interest loan, and they offer below market interest rates right now, rather than the fours, it's about 2.5%. So this is great news for the city. For this $11 million project, over $7 million is going to be free from the state. So that's the sewer project. Simultaneously, we put in for a water project. Uh, that starts on page 21. That was a little bit over about a $4 million project, and they're offering about $1 million of free money, so 25% of free money for that. So both of <clears> those are great news for the city. This is just their notification that they have uh, set aside these monies for the city. Uh, we're hoping that their board will approve it in September, and I'll be back in September then to notify, okay, now it's official, 
and we can start the debt issuance process. So you would be only be borrowing, be borrowing three, uh, four million dollars for the sewer project, and three million dollars for the the water project. But that won't start till September. So we can go through a bunch of numbers if you'd like to. The rest is justification. Uh, but I do want to show you uh, the last two pages, page 26 uh, and 27. Uh, and, and so that's what uh, the analysis they've done and we've done together to figure out, well, how can we afford these loans? That's the most important thing. There's no reason to take a loan if you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And we looked at two scenarios, a 20-year and a 30-year payback. And so we looked at, and, and this, these loans will be paid from water and sewer revenues only. So you will have the flexibility to pledge taxes if you'd like, but right now the intent is to pay from water and sewer revenues. And if you look at your operating revenues, we've looked at your last five years of history, and you know you have about about six hundred thousand dollars of revenues to to apply towards debt. You already have your USDA loans of about one hundred forty thousand dollars, and so we're financing the balance that, that what I said about seven million dollars. If we did a twenty-year payment, the the payments are going to be about four hundred forty, and that's going to be right at your level without any raise increases. You could afford that loan. But your existing USDA loan requirements that you have to have coverage of 1.25% coverage. And if you look on page 26, this far right corner, you only have 1.0 coverage, which is good enough for the Water Development Board, but not for your existing loan covenants. So we finance that a little bit longer to 30 years, so we might could do a little less. But if you do 30 years, which is the last page, that payment is only $320,000 approximately. And therefore, you have well over 1.4 coverage. So without any rate increases to your water and sewer customers to cover all this debt. So that's all that is really great news to the city. And right now it's just information purposes. We're not, uh, uh, it has not been officially awarded, but they haven't, with that funding determination letter, they've allocated that money for the city of Crockett. Any questions on, on any of that for now? sounds affordable okay <laughs> i think so, anything moving towards getting our own mm -hmm. water supply would be great i do think that as we as we get closer to this and we finalize those numbers that we should probably um we'll look at doing a rate study a utility rate study to shore up all the revenues required for this current debt and start working towards asset management and debt reserve as well as uh, asset replacement uh, for depreciation purposes um, something that we haven't done so and this this really makes us whole um, addressing two of our biggest expenses one is shoring up our water source and secondly, our biggest expense currently that needs lots of attention is our wastewater plant. This is this addresses our biggest wastewater plant. We have a small wastewater plant that does need some repairs, but many of that can be addressed, you know, with some in-house funding and stuff like that. It doesn't cost near as much. This north plant, all built in the 1970s, has reached its expiration date, and this is this addresses most of the money that we need to rebuild everything out there and increase the capacity for future growth. And it's going to be future growth. Yep. So, and right now we're paying for water we don't use, right? Millions of gallons of water we don't use. Because somebody so, needs a 30 year contract. Yeah, we need to look into this. Yeah. Yes, sir. No actions required. It's just all information. Well, we appreciate the information. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to put my agenda. Let's find it again. Okay, item number five. Consider and approve a resolution of the City Council of the City of Crockett, Texas, authorizing publication of notice of intent, intention to issue certificates of obligation authorizing the preparation of a preliminary official statement and notice of sale and approving other matters incidental thereto. Mayor, this is what I spoke to um, y'all about a couple of meetings ago. If we're to move forward with um, 
funding measures for our refurbishing our ladder truck and uh, buying a uh, fire engine um, as well as some police vehicles. This this funding vehicle would be the most recommended to where we can get some good interest rates. Um, ben has also provided y'all, I don't know, this, this uh, the first six pages I've, I did provide to y'all um, earlier with that other, when we spoke about uh, borrowing for the for those vehicles. Um, this right here is a notification. This is not, um, like I said, we still have to publish it and then receive quotes, bids, and see uh, what banks, um, who's out there, and what kind of interest rates are to be presented. Um, this just provides us um, with the ability to notify these banks and request bids. And but like I say, you do get some some food for thought in here as far as whether we borrow for 15 years, 10, 15 years, 20 years, and what we believe the associated um, debt service tax rate would be to cover that debt. Okay. It, does the police cars fall off at a certain because a fire truck will last longer. Yep. These cars won't. They won't do 15 years. No, the, the biggest reason is including it with this funding um, opportunity is so we don't have to issue debt twice. We don't have to pay for uh, twice the uh, of, of the debt issuance um, um, and bond council. So I guess, ben, ben, if you don't mind, you can explain, but we can, we can stack the, the police vehicles and the depreciation schedule to fall off earlier you know we pay for the principal towards those vehicles sooner where that falls off mm -hmm. probably four to five years and then the longer term items would those we feel pretty comfortable borrowing for 15 years oh. right so on uh, now the front part of the, the presentation of the handout on page two list the, the items that we're looking to to borrow money for that's the, the Class A fire pumper truck, the refurbishment of the ladder truck, and four uh, uh, police pursuit vehicles, and associated cost for each one of those. And so then the question is, how do we pay for them? This is a, a general obligation debt, and so you normally would pay for this from property taxes, not water and sewer revenues. Mm -hmm. Now, the financing instrument, now the statutes dictate on how you can borrow money. You're not allowed just to go to the bank and borrow money. So the financing instrument is a certificate of, of obligation. That requires what we're doing tonight, the notice of intent. So it's your intent, tell the citizens that we're going to borrow this money. And we're going to be back here on September the 9th to borrow the money. So tonight is just a notice to the public. We're planning to borrow this money for these projects and finance it over 15 years. Now, the software allows you to depreciate the assets separately. So the police cars, which have an asset life of five years, Police, the fire trucks have an asset of 15 to 20 years, so we can depreciate those assets and pay for those separately. But we want to do it in one issue to combine the, all the costs and, and, and issuance uh, time and effort to do that. So if you look at page four, it shows well how we're going to pay for this. So we have a history of your property tax values. So if we look at that for the last 20 years, and for the last 10 years, you've been averaging about 4.9% growth in your assessed valuation. That's what you're going to use to pledge taxes. The last five years is about 7.9. So you have a nice history of, of, of growth. We try to be a little bit more conservative. We only use like a 3% growth factor, so to show you that. Uh, and before we can borrow money, we also have to look at your existing debt. So page five is your existing debt, uh, your 21 series, 22 and 22 series. So the 21 series is about to be paid off. So that, this allows us to, to wrap that debt around the, 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 those, that debt falling off. And so, uh, and then we take that in consideration for the new debt. And then on page six shows uh, what we call the, the tax rate analysis. So if we actually just show a 2% growth rate in your AV, which is a very conservative, you've been averaging over four to 7%. Uh, with your existing debt and your new tax rate, it would be about a two cent increase to your tax rate uh, with those assumptions. Uh, and that we felt was, was, was in line and affordable and, and uh, not a big burden on the taxpayer to get all those that equipment. And on page seven, the handwritten page seven, it shows you some property taxable values of some homes. Uh, if you had a house that's worth $100,000, 
it's a $26 a year increase. So it's not onerous, but it is, it is an increase. But hopefully if the AV goes up a little higher, it won't be as high as a two, two cent tax increase. With those assumptions, uh, we can uh, afford this, all this equipment, pay for it over, four, over 15 years with about a, a maximum of two, two cent tax increase. To your INS debt. So again, tonight it does require action, but the action is just to, is to pass a notice of intent to inform the public this is our intent. We're not borrowing any money yet. We'll be back here in two months. And, uh, and at that time, I will do all the paperwork. Get, uh, we actually will take this to the market. The city, we were able to get a credit rating for the last borrowing. The city is credit worthy enough that we can take it to the market. Well, what is the market? It allows us as a, a financial advisory firm, a broker dealer firm, to take your, your offering and let the whole world bid on it. And mm -hmm. what that does for you is provide you the lowest interest rate. Rather than just trying to go to a local bank or uh, uh, an area bank, we let the whole United States of America bid on this. And so uh, what our experience has shown is that will provide you the lowest interest rate. So we will be here on the 9th of September with that analysis and that, and here's a list of people that bid and what the interest rates were, will be. And that's when you would approve the loan. And then about 30 days later, you'll have your money by the end of September. So will this also include the, um, the road equipment? No, ma'am. We don't have numbers ready. To present for that, we're we're going to have to look at some other options. Um, a couple of those options um, that I would recommend was purchasing used equipment, and I just don't feel comfortable issuing debt on used equipment like that. I um, mean, we did not have uh, short up numbers yet. Um, the other thing to note on this is. Well, why are we borrowing money for police cars? I would really like to request council support that as we continue moving forward, that we don't get into a position where we're issuing debt, a 15 year debt, you know, and, and including police vehicles. I think we really need to keep a fleet replacement program, just like we've been doing with our utilities department, where we're ro rotating them trucks out. It's set in the budget. I would like to do the same thing with our general fund that we keep fresh vehicles and we don't get in a place where we have multiple vehicles needing immediate replacement. But this will definitely put us I hate it back either. back in the game to where we can keep so we can start doing that mm -hmm. again. And I think as you said it's so much better if you don't have to replace chunks of cars. But you keep redoing them as as they tear up we can do like two a year or two or whatever. It takes. So yeah, we did fall behind. I know that we've had some problems with a lot of cars because they got old at the same time. All at the same time. <laughs> Any other questions for me? If, Go. <clears throat> if the interest rates drop between now and then some more, would we get a better interest rate? The, the way the schedule's set up now is we're going to price this on September the 9th. It has to be on a regular scheduled council meeting date. So you're going to get the interest rates what's going to happen on September the 9th. That's right, when you're going to block Between it. now and then, though, between right now and September 9th, will you be checking and seeing if we're we get, can get a better get, interest rate? We're getting rate? bids between now and September 9th. Yes, well, I mean, we, we, we watch it every day, uh, and we you know we have an election going on, and we have a lot of stuff going well, on in the world that affects interest rates. Well, it just dropped a couple percentages. Rates. Right. So. Uh, but we're not affected. We do not uh, select interest rate till set. It has to be on a, on a regularly scheduled council meeting day. Mm -hmm. Unless, if you don't want to do that and want us just to sit and watch the market, we could pass a, a, a parameter resolution where we could sit and watch the market. But I, uh, right now, if you don't do that, the way we had set it up was to, so that you'll get interest rates, the best available interest rate on September, the, September 9th. the 9th. So it can go up and down between now and September 9th. It has really, uh, uh, it has no effect on what your rate will be until September the 9th. No. So it could come down. It could come down. It could go up, it could come down. Uh, but we, we're, we're, we're restricted by council meeting dates 
or, or we have to change the, the legal procedure to do a parameter ordinance where we would just authorize the city manager to, we'd watch the, and every, every week we could watch the market, and when you say go, we could go. Uh, but I, we, I can't predict, the, if I could predict the interest rates right, we wouldn't have to work anymore. But so we, we're, the statutes we're following says it has to be set on a council meeting date on a regular schedule, and this year, it happens this year, Labor Day is your regular scheduled meeting, so we're moving the meeting to the 9th of September. So that's your regular scheduled meeting for September. And that's when the rates will be will locked in on that date. But we're gonna solicit the market, the whole market, the whole world, to get you the lowest interest rate. It's all done electronically, and I'm gonna hopefully have five or six bids, and, and you're gonna get the lowest interest rate on that day. Based on your credit, and, and, and what's going on in the, in, in the market. Okay. Any other questions? Good with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Motion. motion to approve the resolution. I make a motion to approve the resolution. I second. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to item number six. Consider an approved payment of invoices from Crockett Economic and Industrial Development Corporation. about a month and a half. <laughs> it's been about a month and a half.
I make a motion we approve. I second. I second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Motion carries. Brings us to item number seven. <laughs> Fiscal year 2025 budget workshop. All right. Mayor and Council, we can take this. Please stop me anytime you have questions or things you want to add or um, you have uh, comments on. So this is what's going on. But I'll, um, I'll put a draft budget as it regards our revenues for our general fund and our utilities as well as expenditures in those same departments. And um, we'll follow up with the remainder of it will be set by debt service and other special revenues. That'll be in um, the budget as we move forward with it. But this is typically the items that require more council insight and um, direction on. And so this finalizes our first budget workshop that we spoke in. That addressed many of our capital requests, all of our capital outlay and expenditures, one-time purchases, um, as well as a few of the items that council said that they were willing to tr uh, work on appropriating money into our budget for. Um, and so I'm going to recap on some of that. Um, the first two pages are revenues for our general fund, and then after that is uh, revenues for our utilities. And then the third, uh, fourth page begins the departmental expenditures. A few of the budget points that I wanted to talk about that this budget currently as the draft and as you can see on the first page, um, things I want to note is I still do not have certified values from the appraisal district. They're still under ARB and review board on appraisals. So those numbers could still come back and change some. This is, best, this is based on our best estimation, uh, based on their estimated appraisals. So um, things can continue fluctuating a little bit, but this, there's such a, critic, uh, such a tight pit window to get through these decisions and present y'all with a budget and a, a tax rate and get it adopted. Uh, we have to kind of look forward a little bit and then come back and I'll update y'all as numbers change. If we get new numbers and things are, have to be adjusted, they'll have to be adjusted. But this provides y'all with some insight and some the ability to give direction. This budget include, includes the three appropriation requests that was brought to y'all during our bu first budget workshop. This includes a 3% COLA, and like I had mentioned, this captures the uh, savings in our health insurance that we um, by, by moving our health insurance over. It captures those savings and to the employee, it's about $1,500. If, if we use that 3% and we give a, a across the board base increase instead of 3%, which would equate to a higher raise for someone making more than you know a $10 employee versus a $25 employee, 3% are different uh, increases to those two employees. When, when we're trying to address cost of living, everybody pays, everybody gets an increase. Um, so this this does apply to like hourly and not the salary, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. All, all employees. All employees, all employees. salary as well? Yes, ma'am. Sal uh, all employees. Um, most of our salaried employees that are not subject to overtime, um, from library to city hall, um, it applies to everyone, yes, ma'am. Um, and that being said, um, it costs, it'll cost the city around $1,900 per employee and about $1,500 to the employee's pocket at the end of the day if we pass that that number on back to the employee. Um, a year is what they'll, what they'll see. Um, it also includes an animal shelter operational budget and it includes uh, bringing in a utility clerk and uh, promoting our current utility clerk. Um, this budget also provides a revenue stream 
um, that council needs to decide on. This was one of the immediate, um, this was one of the immediate um, recommendations uh, and advice from our attorney that is dealing with the corrective action plan. Um, the city really needs to be careful on um, corporations or nonprofit organizations that we provide agreements with. We need to have an agreement that where the the public um, as a as a as a government we can't give away resources. So um, the recommendation was that the EDC pay for administrative services such as the office, at least the, the office space, and to help pay on utilities. Um, there's current they currently don't pay. I, I, in speaking with others, I think in prior years there was, but at some point it stopped. Um, the EDC, the chamber um, that's currently in some of our offices out there, they did pay and helped out on utilities and some rentals, um, but at some point that stopped and we really need to uh, shore that up to, to where we don't get in trouble. And okay. that's my recommendation. Well, the, the EDC is paying on electrical and water no not what for their offices that's for the college that's for the engineering like college. college okay that we don't make no money on that's for the college building okay so uh so so are you saying this is at the civic center location or? yes sir. okay so um my suggestion is that we recommend the location to be moved um to the tech center so can we place that on the agenda? We'll have to discuss that. Yes, no, we can put that back on the agenda if that's what y'all want. Yeah. I'll wait. To the tech center? Out to the college. They're wanting to move the... Okay, what if we... Don't we have something working right now to go in there? Yes, sir. What if we have something in there? Yes, well, there. We'll make those adjustments for general. What's wrong with where it's at? Well, what's wrong with moving it to the tech center? I mean, I don't know. Probably I mean, be an item we, that we need to put on the agenda and for discussion. For, for we, discussion. Yeah. Just to move it over. Because we got something yeah. looking right now, right? Yeah. Right. Well, we put it on. I, yeah, because right now. I'm on the discussion. Okay. Um, this also um, something that we really need to address moving forward. I have, we have several outlying programs and departments within the city um, that has not really been incorporated in a structure of, of oversight and um, just a, a lot of just, just some outlying departments and I'll go over that in a little bit. And I actually provided it towards, I believe it's at the end of y'all's uh, packet, uh, this right here. Yeah, you have oh, your hand yeah. on it. Yeah, okay. And so. I wanted to talk a little bit about that as we as we move forward, um, and we can stop and talk about that now. We currently have the fire marshals, the department of the fire marshal, who has been up to, up until now funding our assistant city uh, administrator. Um, as he was promoted to assistant city administrator, we still have that department and its line items associated with it. We have. Our planning and zoning departments, with the help of an, of an assistant administrator, some of the items that, as we developed his job description and his contract, that we needed assistance on, we did not have good oversight on, is our planning and zoning. Um, most of the, all that was operated within City Hall and under my purview with the building official or the code enforcement official would like to bring those in and consolidate them then within a department and the most reasonable department i'm recommending council that we um that we 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 put a new department together that incorporates all of these outlying departments we put one department with a department head that they all respond to we have one budget for them all. Instead of them falling under general administration or city hall's budget, 
that they be incorporated. We we move them out of those departments and we uh, streamline them into one department. Um, our building and development services, all of our code enforcement, co code compliance, permits, inspections, plan reviews, economic development. We need to, we need to talk on that, Council. I need help. With economic development, we're in a situation now where the city provides a lot of economic development services that's outside of the scope of just our current type A CEIDC. We have a CEIDC who collects a type A revenue from sales tax, and it's very limited to what that sales tax can be allocated to. The, the CEIDC can only be spent towards type A projects. In the last couple of years, the city has experienced rapid growth and um, interest where people are coming to us with more and more projects and expansions, things that do not qualify for the type A EDC fund uh, or, or, or expenditures. They're not a business that's gonna be moving into the industrial park or they're not a business that's going to be a indust of the industrial or manufacturing uh, category. 380 agreements. The city has overlooked 380 agreements since I've, since I've been with the city and known about you know any of the city's dealings. We have not done 380 agreements. We have not done tax increment refinancing. We have not done a lot of the projects that are available or programs that are available to a city to attract these businesses. Um, in the last year and a half, I've been thrown into dealing with a lot of these programs and realize that the city we're, we've really limited ourselves. We've limited ourselves to one aspect and I think council needs to decide if y'all want, I, I believe we need to address economic development holistically under the entire city as well as that's what our, our attorney has addressed and made some recommendations. Those are council's decisions later though. I'm not asking y'all to make those decisions. Yes, well, make sure that you so, make note, John, that he said that the um, that it was uh, together, but EDC was separate. So make sure that you so, know that EDC is a nonprofit uh, and that we are it's separate from the city. Yeah, but so, what, so what he's saying. Specifically for that reason. So and specifically that was, for oh, that. Yeah. I'm sorry. The way it was explained at that last economic development, they were saying that the reason you have the different types, the type A, the type B, it had to do with the fact of what you could fund and who you could help. We have traditionally been stumped by the smaller businesses that weren't increasing, meeting the qualification. Kind of like when, just when you bought your business in, it didn't qualify for a type A, which would have been the, would have been the standard economic development because it didn't bring in the jobs and the number of people, and you had to be get X the number of people to get the benefit. What we lack as a city is the other part, and I think Grapeman did it with theirs. They just regrouped and did both, but we're not there. He's not proposing to do both, but proposing that the city is going to have to start addressing it in two parts. We have a lot of small business, but they're not going to bring numbers. They're going to bring small business, but as a city, you're able to help them because you're not, they're not viewed as a, with the same industrial, industrial primary jobs. Primary so you're jobs, saying yeah. address those issues under the city? Some some issues will be addressed. Uh, uh, up under. until now, we haven't been addressing them at all. They have, they've just been going. So, we've been turning people away because they didn't qualify for type A. a. They didn't meet the, the guidelines. So we had several smaller businesses that wouldn't have met the guideline. But what our goal is as a city is to bring in small business so that they don't have to compete for the same guideline. Like you say, you have a, a one operator. What could you do to work with that person that has one, maybe two employees? But that's it. But they're not going to be increasing employees simply because of the, the nature of their business. But they are going to be bringing business because of the nature of the business. They'll be producing income and stuff for the city. So what, what hasn't happened with Crockett is that we, we, everybody that wanted to come to Crockett hasn't been qualified 
for that economic development as the art of the nonprofit could actually help them because they didn't have the, the they didn't meet the requirements in terms of how many people you can do you have to take on this excellent amount of workers you so, have to produce this so so that that yeah. right there in itself mm -hmm. uh mayor uh, about how many people that can be employed i mean you have a uh, small business they majority of the small businesses only have their families in and that's so it. that does not give anyone else in the city yeah. an opportunity of oh but it's not but it brings income to the city mm -hmm. every job is not going to bring massive employees well, we want jobs yeah we but we right. want income too and we, and we you want, want business that right. produce so we need income. to do our part as as um uh uh, as oh, that's not going to change. Your well, role will always yeah, be so as economic development. Economic development, sure. do that part. Yeah, yeah that's great, well, I bring think in. we all need to do economic yeah. development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their part that's what is it's all of our part. Mm -hmm. And so, that being said, there's limited funds that that sales tax is is brought in and addresses. The things that I'm talking about are not things that uh, we will be collecting a new, new tax for. Um, like I said, 380 agreements. When a certain uh, property comes in and develops and, and, and invests <coughs> capital investment and create additional sales taxes, many things can be worked out by abatements. Abatements is not a type A EDC you know, tax abatements with the county and with the city. That's a city program. All of these programs that are managed under the city's responsibility and purview outside of the, the more limited scope of what the EDC does, my, th my thoughts are we need to be working together on that regardless. Mm -hmm. However, whatever council decides with the corporation of the CEIDC, we still have economic development to take care of moving forward. And I'm not asking to hire a new director. We're, we've been doing it for the last few years ourselves and you know already. We can do that. We can continue doing so that. So is, is that the reason you, uh, no disrespect to you, Mr. Stanley, but is that the reason you hired an assistant uh, uh, director? Because what I want to know is what uh, what more you have on your plate than you've had over the last um, how many years you've been? It's items that we. It's not items that are more on my plate. It's items that we have not been addressing as a city. Mm -hmm. Items that have not been touched on. We have not addressed those items. So those are items that we need to start taking care of. Mm -hmm. For instance, I have one. And like the mayor was saying with jobs some of that is the case there's others re so right now there's a company that's very interested in moving into crockett but it's in the retail industry it's not a type a primary industrial corporate uh, manufacturing business is it retail moving. we've already got here no sir okay it's that's it's, my problem right that's my problem with it is if it's something we've already got here and you and we give money to something to come in to and i'm not saying competition is good sure competition is real good i've got a lot of competition out there yeah competition is good but if you if you you have a hometown person here that's trying to make it and you have a you franchise, have a, a franchise yeah. come in here and and we give them money to put our hometown people out of business i'm not for that this company here is in is in retail. They produce their own product, and they're wanting to expand um, packaging and distribution. They're wanting to build a building and bring all of their revenue. They're currently set up in the county outside of any city. They're wanting to bring in and build a business that would bring all that revenue, that sales tax revenue, into the city of Crockett. They're looking at hiring uh, 10 to 15 employees, and so. It's being that it's in retail and it's not it primary job related, our CEIDC would be somewhat limited. However, there's many other opportunities that we can work with them to help pay for that capital investment and get them, incentivize them enough to where they decide to move in here and not build a new big building out in the county somewhere. So they're not manufacturing it here? No, sir. Okay, so that, no, that's our problem. Yes, they're not manufacturing mm -hmm. it. Correct. So and basically, so. you're telling me that, to me, is just, so you're telling me that you're targeting 
the funds of the no. EDC? No, it no, wouldn't no, be the EDC no. funds. No. Okay. It They're their be. own corporation managed by their board. And, their and however council decides okay. to operate with the CEIDC, the city has economic development that it needs to take care of. Okay. And I would love to work with that CEIDC corporation mm -hmm. to complement mm -hmm. and both of us work together mm -hmm. on that. However, council needs to make those decisions at a future date. However, what I'm trying to address is we need we need to be able to address economic we have been addressing economic development. And so I would like that understanding of this is the Department of Community Services and, 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 and Development uh, within the city to to incorporate all of those EDC programs that are outside of our CEIDC programs. Um, code enforcement. We currently have a person hired as our code enforcement officer operating. He needs he needs a boss. I can't I can't work specifically with this person every day. Where are we at on this? Hey, he has a decision to make. I need to know what to do here. He needs someone to answer to and work with. Um, our animal control and shelter services. I spoke with the police chief. I spoke with Mr. Uh, Stanley. We feel like it has been some, there are some cities that the animal control, animal shelter, and all those services operate under the police department, but they're, they're little apples and oranges. Animal control and, and shelter, or animal control really, is a, is a ordinance or code. In force. In force. It's not a criminal or, 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 you know, under the penal code or anything like that. So it's just the, the, uh, the ability to operate that department efficiently. Right now the police department does not feel like they have the proper, the amount of oversight to, to uh, focus efforts on our animal shelter, especially with the addition of our animal shelter. We have animal control and now a new animal shelter without, without new supervisors or new people and they rotate their schedules on and off so there's not always the same person. So we feel like that needs to be part of our community services department. Okay. Well, um, on that note, I've just said, what is happening right now? From the time I came to the council directly and just keep it, there has not been really any organization in terms of who else to whom. You have all the departments doing their own thing. I mean, and I'm talking the city, I'm not including right. economic. Mm -hmm. and until you know who's responsible for what. And one person, where that's just unrealistic to think, but that was the way it has been in the past. That's in the past, that's why nothing could really get done. What, if you go to other city, they'll have the, like I said, community service. So everybody that works with the community service will have one supervisor right. that they answer to, even though they may have multiple people in rankings, but you've gotta have ahead. Crockett has had a problem with putting people in supervisor so that they knew who they were at, uh, responsible to and, and just you had somebody, well, hold, hold somebody accountable. And so we, if you look at the history, you see that people, they say, well, who do you answer to? Well, I run my stuff, but, but you, don't, you don't run it cohesive enough, you don't run it balanced enough, you just run it. But if you had one person, and that was the whole point, you said what was actually Mr. Stan, Stanley's role at that time, and you did mention my name, but it was brought in to add some organization. Like I said, when we first came in, we had one person covering everything, and it was no direct supervision. I think in order to streamline and hold accountable, you'd be able to see exactly what the goals are set. Each department would set their goals, mm -hmm. and you could actually trace what was being done. And so the in terms of bumping heads, you bump heads when you don't know what your job is. Yes. You go smoothly when you know what your job mm -hmm. is and you have that specific job description and you can tell who's stepping over and who's stepping in under or whatever. And so the point of it, and this is this didn't just come about with this budget. This was a recommendation that had been working on for the last three or four years because I saw the holes and I mm -hmm. thought that it wasn't I, when I even I spoke with John, I thought that it wasn't well organized, that one city manager took care of the whole city and nobody answered directly to anybody but one person. Now, 
it's not functional, and it wasn't functional, and things weren't getting done. So if you have one person in a department, just like with, with, with mm -hmm. whatever your job, well, you know how they, they work, mm -hmm. because you've worked on, in a corporate section. You have one person that was responsible for this department, and what has actually been proposed is to group them in matching department. Mm -hmm. Uh, zone planning and zoning, all of them depend on each other to get mm -hmm. the same thing done. So that would be a department, and it would have one head, and yeah. then the next would be so that it is. And so I think that it would be a better way that uh, you can do a, accountability. I mean, it's, accountability is always important. But I know that when I first saw it, I just said, who answers the wound? Because I asked John for a hierarchy. I said, give me some steps. Tell me who's one, two, and three on this one. And it was just one big circle mm -hmm. and happy family. Mm -hmm. it was a happy family but I, don't, I never could tell what each part of the family was responsible for but it's it's becoming more streamlined now and we're able to see who's accountable and who should be doing this mm -hmm. and you won't have as many holes in your uh, in so your organization we, we in got to where we were really siloed I know my first year included lots of those changes but for instance just departments that work with each other on a daily basis, the Parks Department, Streets Department, Water mm -hmm. and Sewer, mm -hmm. they were all meeting at separate locations. At, and one would one had a like seven to four o'clock work schedule, one was eight to five, and this one took an hour break, and this mm -hmm. one three, and they, they just they would meet at separate locations and not know that the street department was down two people because one mm -hmm. was sick, one was on vacation. So they're over there hopping along without the people. Now everybody under one uh, public works director, they all show up at the same office. Hey, uh, water office, they're gonna be short. Sewer department, we need two of you guys to go over there. That's just, that's how we work. So basically, so it's just the I same departments. We're not hiring new people. We're not. Uh, so basically, they're, they're, they have a supervisor that they're reporting to. Right. And so at the end of the day, the supervisor will end up reporting to you if there's any anything that needs to filter through with okay. decisions that can't be that. made on the local level okay and so the community liaison and the reason that one's built in we have we have a person that we need to continue developing and working in that community liaison we have several things that council will be receiving over the next few months as we move forward with this position however right now the bulk of the, our community liaison has been in developing our and marketing our civic center um, our civic center and you'll see right now when we go down in revenues our civic center revenues have um, increased by about 400 um, percent since the city has started really marketing it and managing the funds the deposits make sh making sure the the finances are in, in order fixing things that, it, it, that need to be fixed instead of just kind of we just kind of walked into surprises at some point that nobody knew that nobody else knew didn't know and so, so having somebody out there at that department especially with the creation of additional offices they can work hand in hand but some a, a new business coming into town or somebody wanting to say somebody wants to build something they want to or they want to remodel something they can speak with building official code enforcement planning and zoning so any, any needs for zone changes or permits or plan reviews, same office, same location. My big what we need was the rodeo ring. Well, this forms the structure for that, and that's the next step too as well. Um, those are all items that um, have been brought to our Blue attention seeds. that really need to be addressed, the ag arena, um, the civic center, all of those yeah. items. Then really you know I'm fixing to ask about the swimming pool. Oh, yeah, the pool. The swimming pool. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not I don't, I don't lifeguard well and teach and. <laughs> but um, just kind of moving, uh, moving back just a little bit about the animal shelter. I would like to visit uh, another location so we can look at Absolutely. advantages and disadvantages and how we can set up or R right what now we need to look at doing and what it's going to be a cost. What kind of cost will it actually be to the city? Sure. Absolutely. And so. I'm currently using estimates from all of our other city facilities as well as 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 we've reached out to other animal shelters spoke with the uh the veterinarian these are th like i said this is our best i don't want to call it a stab in the dark but this is our best estimate on what this animal shelter 
that's going to cost to run. However, if council develops this budget and says, yes, we are allocating this, this is how I'm working on this when it comes to something that we've never done before, and that's the animal shelter and animal control process, is once I know what we're going to spend, I spend no more than what we're, we have allocated. And if the demand or the need is gr much greater than the amount of money that we've allocated, we manage that. And next year I bring it to you, I said, we can only manage an average of six dogs per month. And we're seeing an increase, we're having a turn, we're not able to address the need, we need to increase our capacity to 10 or 12. And this is the, now I have hard numbers to present to council, because right now I, I have no clue. I have only what other animal shelters are presenting and some basic estimates. And so that's what's in this budget. So I, I do understand that, but every year that we've budgeted and we've gone out and gotten really good numbers and budgets and everything together, and then council just did not appropriate the funds. <laughs> and so I want to know that council's ready to appropriate these funds mm -hmm. before we waste mm -hmm. time and money in. So how will we be able to appropriate this? some funds for the swimming pool? The swimming pool, yes, sir. the swimming pool is, if we've made, if we put, put in the application, it's, and it's due by August the 1st, we have 90 to 120 days before we receive the, the uh, hopefully approval, if we do get approved of the funds. And so then the construction period is a good year. And so once I know the size of that pool, the amount of money that we do have set aside and we do receive in grant funds, this is the size of the pool, then I can run numbers on consumption demands, electricity, chemicals, whatever it be, how many lifeguards and all those numbers. The, we have lots of support from uh, Boys and Girls Club who have, are, are willing to operate it as well. They have numbers from Lufkin, Nacogdoches. They have two locations in, in Lufkin. They can give us good hard um, expense numbers and um, help us through that process. But we're a good year and a half probably out, if not more, um, for that finalizing so it wouldn't be in this budget. So basically the pool has been placed like put on the back burner for a while or it has been up until now. It at this point it's not no ma'am. No ma'am. This fund is active fund instead yes. of being that are in the process of being accepted. There is a designated amount already there, but it, it wouldn't be sufficient for the size pool that we really need. It could be right. a small yeah. pool but we want a functional pool that we'll be able to use it beyond the scope of what the other one was used for. And so, so is it enough? It's a, it, there's a pocket of money already set aside, but it's just a small amount. Mm -hmm. We're seeking to increase it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And we just did, we did we did receive a good opportunity for for funding okay. it. Um, we had a public hearing not too long ago that we spoke about that in depth, and um, we feel like we really have. A, um, a good shot at it this year. Um, that being said, facility management and maintenance and library services, I would like to collectively put those, put those departments. Um, some of these are not going to come with an additional person. You know, we're not hiring new people. We're using, some people wear two or three hats, but those people will, would be under this department. And as you see it in y'all's budget draft, um, that's what those that's what those numbers are for um, we did receive a water rate increase notice from the uh, Houston County control improvement water district um, I am meeting with them this week um, my request is that due to the amount of additional treatment that we're having to provide they need to, to continue increase. using that water um, as well as not having received any budget justifications for a four percent four percent increase this budget does not have it uh the does not have a four per four percent increase in the budget you know in revenue or expenses however as that plays out and if we come to an impasse i'm bringing that back to council and, and saying, you know we'll have to make those We'll have to talk about it. I'm just telling you that this budget does not address a 4% increase, even though we have been told that we're 
going to get a 4% increase? I, I would like them to be at our, not our next meeting, but if, if I would like them to be here to explain why mm -hmm. they need a 4% increase when we have to treat water and we're using our well right now to even help out. And and then we're spending millions of, we're buying millions, millions of gallons of water that we don't even use. So right now we're averaging about they need to be here. We're they need averaging to be here. about five hundred dollars per day in chem in additional chemicals. Yeah, they need to be here to, wow. to treat the water. Um, yeah. And just, so just, that's my request to them is we need to figure out how we're going to be able to move forward and 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 be the. the uh, Anyway, I have some concerns, and I'll and I'll bring that up to y'all after I meet with them. And yes, sir, that's what I would request: is if 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 they feel like that that's necessary, then they come and present it to council. They sure meeting. need to. Yeah. Uh, garbage rate increase of three percent. And to remind council, when does that come up again? Uh, the contract. The contract Should expires we? at the end of twenty-five. And so this spring. This spring we'll, we will be going out for bids again. This spring. Okay. So they're going up 3%. Right. Right? Again this year. Right. All right. That's been given to them in their contract, though. They, they were yeah. given to the CPI, the CPI which, which does from, from personnel expenses to all goods, uh, consumer goods to uh, fuel, tires, and it, it, vehicle parts. Can't anything. Say fuel this year. Not, not this year. But CPI has increased since last year at this time 3.8%. Okay. And so by our contract, our contract says three, the CPI or up and capped at 3%. Mm -hmm. So the CPI is greater than 3%. Okay. Council members, all right. If th this is us trying to help the city if they, when we do this bid and they go up 3% on us and they do this bid and then they lower their cost to try to get this bid, let's remember that. Let's, let's remember that they lowered when we go out for bids because you know there's going to be people under bid. Well, how, yeah, I was just saying, how are you going to balance be, out if anybody, can, if, that, if the next company is not going to go up on their there's, there's their There's going to be people who go under them. So yeah. if they can do it now, if they go under, if they lower their bid, then they don't have to go up. Well, my question is, would we be able to put up some type of clause in there to where they paid? To where we could put some type of option, give them a, give them an option to out to get out of the contract. If they do this, we do this. If they, Why do know, they want to get out of the contract? Yeah, they're wanting to renew their contract. I, I know, I'm talking about giving us a, a way out. Oh, if, if, no if they don't, if they're not, yeah. Yeah. If buy they're, our contract with you. Right, if, they don't, if they don't uh, uh, keep their end of the bargain, sure. then yeah. we need to have a way to opt out. Of the I contract. can say managing this, managing this currently, I do understand Mr. Marsh's concerns, but managing this current contract has been some of the best relationships that I've had with Piney Woods versus our pre previous contracts. And the services have And they, they've, they've moved into town and have hired 24 of our local people to, to run not just the city of Crockett, but Houston mm -hmm. County, several other counties, uh, Elkhart, uh, Grapeland, uh, you know, Centerville, so, they all operate out of the Crockett um, location. And, and the next company can too. Well, I don't know. Um, we have made it kind of they can. They can operate. Piney Woods slash Live Oak was the only one that offered that. When mm -hmm. we went out to the bid last time, I believe we had four bids. They were the only ones that offered to operate locally. Everybody else was going to their location S serve out of their location just send a truck down here with their employee from another city and then run back home so but i but yes, what i'm saying to next year is a new year under sure yeah that that's the problem that's the problem the other thing to mention as we move forward with this is 
we're under a 20 year transfer station. So the transfer station out there where all those trucks come in, back up and dump into a transfer 18 wheeler mm -hmm. truck, they have a 20 year lease because they built all that facility out mm -hmm. there on the transfer station side. So we bring in somebody else. So if, if somebody else comes in, they may or may not. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway. some things to think about as we. So that means as we go into the it's some things to think about for them too. Claw back claws in there. <laughs> no. In the no, I would say, yeah, in terms. Of, I just said in terms of the service. Um, it's like that one year they went up twice on us. They went up six percent instead of three. Because they skipped a year. <laughs> but I'm just saying they they did not go up three percent one year. Because yeah. they didn't feel like they needed to that year, but the second year, well, things have come. They should have went so. But the fact that, like I said, if, even in balancing, I do not yeah. like high bills, but service. They take couches that we don't have all that stuff laying in the ditches now. We are we not. Don't have, they nobody was picking that stuff up, and people were throwing it in every ditch mm -hmm. that was available in this city. And then if you. And if you had trash on the side of your can, that trash was still there. Mm -hmm. They'll pick, pick up stuff that you wouldn't. If you have a couch that need to be moved off your porch and you so you can call them and they'll help you get it off if you if you make arrangement. And that's I mean to me, I've never seen that kind of personal service since I've been in Crockett. So I we've really had a I mean, I wish we could negotiate something so that the price is right, but in terms of what you're getting service-wise, because you have to pay people to take off couches and pay for when you take them over to the dumpster and stuff, but you can just call and make arrangements. It used to be on certain days. Now you can just call on any day mm -hmm. and they'll move big stuff out. Yeah. So I would really like, I mean, like I said, in terms of service, I would like for us to maybe we could negotiate we don't use we don't utilize that yeah. those options enough. They provide they every week, every week that you have your regular pickup. If you call them the day before, yeah, pick if up. you're a Wednesday pickup and you have, they'll pick up to two large items, a couch, a dresser, a mattress, for free. If you just call, if you call them ahead of time, they'll come you can't out and get a hold of them. You we can't. You can't. So you, so you here you cannot call. call that number and get a hold of. Them. You call City Hall. We are the administrator. We we administer their services. <laughs> I see so many people online trying to get a hold of them. That's the are county they contract. Online? No, that's the county. It is. So what I'm telling you, the public, I'm telling you, in, in council, if people call y'all and are complaining about contacting them, we're the administrator for Piney Woods. Mm -hmm. We administer their services because we collect those funds and we have to ensure that they do what they say they're going to do. So you call if you don't worry about calling in. If you're a county resident or somewhere else, absolutely. That That's you not live in the county. Point. Here we are the middleman, so we will answer, and we'll be sure that they pick it up, or we'll be sure that they do answer. Because uh, I know that that is a complaint in the county. We call this number, and they have several different numbers, and and they send you. Over. We have their direct phone, cell phones, and we call them directly. And so, if you live in the city, that that should not be a complaint if people are mentioning that. Call us. We'll take care of it. I like that, um, I like that trash service, though. Yeah. Hmm. I like that trash service. Yeah, they do. Um, I like care of side. This budget, so uh, a few more items. This this budget, uh, last year, there was a garbage rate increase of 3%, and last year we did not pass it on. We did not increase our the garbage rates. We ate the cost ourselves. Um, this year, we're running, we're running a bit tighter. And so, share the cost. <laughs> I am asking for council to help us on that. Um, well, and I'll talk about it. So, we did not pass it on last year. We currently have a 34000 As you see, the budget as it's currently drafted, we have about $34,000 of, of revenue that has not been allocated in our budget. I wanted to know what council's decision was. There's two or three things that have not been addressed with this budget. One is passing that rate on. If we eat that cost, then that's about the amount that we raise. That we raise. <laughs> so if we eat the the rate increase and do not pass it on, that revenue will go away. 
The other thing that was mentioned um, by the police department was certificate pay. This budget currently does not have certificate pay. And I would further ask if we are going to do certificate pay for the police department, which I, d I don't disagree with, I think we need to do it for all of our um, off, uh, for all of our employees. If you have water licenses, if you have a bachelor's degree, if there's whatever it is that we pay, that we pay all of our employees equally, um, or, or or give them that same opportunity, that certificate pay. And so that would be a policy change. If we're going to provide certificate pay, that we do it by policy change because it has to be. And I present that back to council. And say, if y'all say I want to put that into certificate pay. We bring it back a, a, a proposal from police, fire, water department, you know, water and sewer that have licenses, CDLs, anything that requires certain standard license. Licenses that provide you, um, us, the city, more of a value out of that person, but they can't use that other, another person equally. I recommend that we take that and we bring that to council. So, so I, to, uh, mm. yeah, go ahead. So are these employees, are they, per, are they paying for their own uh, certifications or what's, what's going on? No, no, typically, Before um, the, certificate. The, the only cost, the only cost, well, it depends. So for water and sewer, we have classes that are provided to these employees and we pay for a certification uh, test. They go out and take a test to gain these licenses. We pay for all the CE. And so same thing with the police department. Most of those are years of certain like if they if they've been a police officer certified police officer and they're a basic and they've been there for say four years and they've taken all this mandatory ce now they're qualified so those most of those are not at a cost to them other than maybe the test is there a, once they provide all the required uh ce years of service they can get that certification so it makes them it's a, they're more valuable and they have more experience and they're not a basic certified police officer they're intermediate advanced masters peace officer a water license you have a class d water license b c water license b each one of those make that employee much more valuable to the city by having those certifications tcq gives us better you know uh, 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 my mind went blank reports when, so whenever we every year we go through a certification process with tcq mm -hmm. and so each of those licenses work towards our total point system we get the for instance the city of crockett they have, they have we have to have a b water a wastewater license operator we have to have two c water license so we have to have those and we have employees that have them and we're required that you know mm. why would why would we not pay them certification pay? So there's a good, a good argument behind that, but I would just be concerned about doing it. And and nothing against the police department. He's the he's the one, you know. He's asked for it, and and he's fighting for his people. So kudos to him. I want I want all of us to look at that if we're going to do it though. Mm -hmm. It's um, mandated code. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And um, and the last thing is. So those are the few items that we need to talk about. Cell phones or the satellite phones that was brought up at our last meeting. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a few quotes. Do y'all want to do satellite phones? The best, the contractor that works for, uh, that, that works with our Verizon commercial account, the best deal that they offer and um, the e best entry level was 819 upfront payment to buy, purchase the phone and I'll show it to you to purchase the phone 819 and then for a 90 minute plan a hundred dollars a month so for a hundred dollars we get up to 90 minutes and I don't like this plan near as much as when we used to have a satellite phone it we bought the phone minute. and we only paid five dollar maintenance fee when we had to use it we were paying ten bucks a minute but that's extreme emergencies that could sit on the shelf for three years five years because and when you need it you need it it's well, a cost that we occur right then but not well don't our emergency management already have it no sir we do not our at some point our county emergency management don't have it does the county have it so the county has theirs they got the city does not 
Okay. So. So where would the city be located? I mean, would that's it be, also, would it, I mean, would it be a, tied to a designated site? Uh, I think know, it we, should either be at one location. Yes. Yeah, uh, that our emergency management co coordinator or fire chief, police chief, whoever needs access to so it. We have one or two. We could get pretty crazy with it. Yeah. Sometimes it's it's handy to have five or six people having them, but that's a lot of money. Yeah. For that one time. Maybe we need to designate a place for them. <laughs> so, so if y'all wanted to move forward with it, I just bring in your numbers. Why, why don't I, we just table this right now until Clayton goes to that deal this coming up weekend and see what they offer. You can check out and see what they they have in okay. a you know he's fixing to go to something that's really going to be a see, conference yeah. Yeah, yeah see what's available. Well that's what our our contractor, you know, our Verizon business contract will provide. So I wanted to bring that back to you because I was requested to. Um, garbage rate increase. Mm -hmm. it, it would cost around thirty cents for a three percent increase to pass that prop to pass that three percent on. And uh, let's see. Thirty-eight cents. So, passing that three percent on, it's going to cost for a residential service thirty-eight cents. What is um, it per? It depends on the amount of this. The the what it's three percent. It? What what is what is a? Uh, it depends on the size. Of, so there's about four twenty-five yards. different correct categories. Two hundred forty bucks. Two hundred forty bucks. Per month is seven dollars and two cents. That three percent. So, if we pass it on, that's you know about thirty-eight cent, thirty-seven, thirty-eight cents per residential customer. If we don't pass it on and we eat it again, that'll address that um, thirty-four thousand dollars surplus. Splitting the difference. <laughs> Could you half and half? We can. Anything. I mean, y'all you know, decide. Last year we didn't do it at all. So it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah, back to what well. you had mentioned earlier. You know, if you skip a year, <laughs> we're not going to go back and catch they, up next year. They but, did. Well, <laughs> can we? <laughs> they did. Can we? <laughs> they did. I mean, I, I mean <laughs> so. like I said, I, I'm so service oriented in what you get banged for your bucks that, you know, Maybe we could split it. it will, it, you could. But sometimes you need them to come here and explain. Well, I mean, I don't why have. A, I they would need have a, this increase. Right. If you because gas this, prices so. ain't like it was back yeah. three years ago, so we need to know why they need this increase. Gas prices. And you need them to come and explain it. Well, you, you need to ask. put it on paper. Explain why you need this increase. Yeah. I mean, I know we always talk about residents. But we got small business in yeah. here, mm -hmm. and you, yeah, seven bucks don't sound like much. So yeah, I yeah, mean, so, I'm, I'm but saying seven it. bucks on when you're making twenty bucks, it adds up. Add it up. Yeah. But so that's, the, that's kind of the discussion that I need counsel to. I mean, but yeah, that's, I'd like to hear. I'd work. like to hear from the water district. The I'd like to hear from the water district. I'd like to hear from the garbage company. Why? Why do you need this increase? Why do you need it? Well, I think it's, I mean that's a reasonable why expectation that we could do it. If, yeah. If you can set up, tell them to come explain to us. We can. That, that, that sounds reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. And when the water district comes, tell them to bring their contract. I'd like to. <laughs> yeah, when they can come, we ask them to come and let them explain. Okay, John. We'll so that, that's that. your that's your talking points. Um, the biggest changes that this budget addresses. Okay. Yeah. I have a breakdown, like I said, of the revenue, um, of the some of the things that had the high, the, you know, some some changes. Mm -hmm. um, I made some notes on. 
I would recommend that as we, we, that we go through it, um, I can meet with y'all one on one. If y'all have specific questions, we can make notes on it. Um, this will help me finalize my draft budget to bring okay. back to council. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for instance, in rental lease revenue, first page, um, we have Live Oak. They pay a thousand dollars per month uh, for um, the maintenance shed out there at the. That wasn't included in their initial contract, mm -hmm. and so we had an extra shop out there that they're renting from us to, to do all their mechanic work in. They pay a thousand dollars a month. Uh, we have a Verizon tower um, that was recently built, so they're paying us a nine hundred and fifty dollar a month. So some of these additional revenues are some of these things like that. Um, I won't counsel. We're going to have to bring back an administrative uh, agreement with Chamber of Commerce, Ag Arena, uh, Civic, uh, the um, CEIDC. So for for office space, if we're going to continue spending money, we at least need to be yeah, sure that those agreement. expenses are covered. You know. Um, and if you look down through through the uh, revenues. Um, a couple of them. The uh, general admin, that city's hall, hall's budget. So as we move people, it, it, when you see savings, the city uh, city hall's um, budget, as well as police department, that's moving their uh, animal control officer, you know, including those under the community services department. So you'll see you'll see uh, reductions in some of those. Um, we also had a correction in our street department where we moved. We've just been busier in our streets department and Don't less you. busy in our parks department. And thankfully we have assistance from TDC um, helping on some of the mowing, but mowing is. we can definitely use them in the street department. So we did a transfer. I'm, I'm wanting to increase one of the employees moving from the there. He's currently being paid by the parks department, but still working for the streets. I want to go ahead and move that person over and keep him in the streets department to where we're properly funding it. <coughs> um, um, can I ask you a question? Yes, the um, equipment that we used that the city had, like for mowing and things like that, you know, that with the with the tractor and the long arm, the boom still, arm? yes, do we still have that? Yes, okay, so we just don't have anybody to operate it, or yes. We use it pretty regularly. Yes. Okay, because I'm just. You got a place. You got a place that needs mowing. Yes, sir. All right. It's a lot. Yes, sir. That big hill that usually mow right there for the overpass. We yeah. can't really mow with that. Yeah, okay. um, actually, our TDC inmates. But we've been down with. Uh, they've been on lockdown for a little over two and a half months. So we've been managing it as best as we can in house. Um, they are back, okay. and they really help us. We tried it with that boom mower, but we can only go up about. 10, 15 feet past that sidewalk. We mm -hmm. can't get up high enough on that hill, so that really needs to be done with, uh, with okay. weed eaters. And yes, ma'am, that does need, I noticed that the other day. And I have a lot of issues, I have issues with the bottom. West Houston, I saw. Yes, sir, and um, as well, we have a lot of um, stop signs that have grass that's grown up over them and, and needs repairing and all that, yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, Anything from the things that I mentioned, Council, that y'all have more comments or? I think that overall, I think we're going in a good direction in terms of uh, organization and accountability and knowing where you can go to get the, the services that you need without going to two and three different buildings. And also, like you said, an explanation, as Mike suggested, an explanation on where the costs come, why. Yeah. I think it's reasonable. Uh, okay. And before, before we close out, I have some items I'd like to place on the next um, agenda for the next meeting okay. of August. Um, there's quite a few of them. I kind of just went through just thinking. Okay. okay, just speak into the mic, please. Mm -hmm. Lean forward if you have to. 
I'll pull it down. Okay, um, I have a few items that I want to place on the agenda for oh, the next are meeting. We oh, are we done? Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I uh, want to implement a policy and procedure that specifically details the rules and, and uh, procedures to place an item on the agenda according to the Section 309 Rules of Procedure on page 6 of the City Charter. I um, want to also uh, look at amending the two meeting, meeting, uh, meetings a month um, meetings a month um, in reference to the yes <laughs> yeah, uh, in reference to uh, section 3.07 uh, of the city charter okay. it's a bug up here <laughs> and he is flying <laughs> Uh, also, I would like. Are you going to be able to provide that to me? I, I will. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. But I, I sure will. Um, and I'll just redo it because I got some markers okay. and everything on here. Um, I also want to implement rules and procedures of uh, that require a decorum, a courtesy, and order of meetings when the public is addressing the city council members, uh, according to section three point zero nine in the city charter. A quorum? No, decor, a, decorum. Like a decorum, decorum policy. Decorum, like a, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, I want to uh, take action to, um, and I think I said this on the last meeting where they couldn't hear me, um, where I was telling you that I was want to place on the agenda to remove, appoint um, the Board of Directors for the Economic Development uh, Corporation. Okay, so you want to remove all the boards, members? Yes. That's council. Yeah, we'll discuss it, yes. So I'll it, remove it's a, all it's the it's board members. Well, it's a discussion, court, a discussion. But that's what you want to do, discussion or discussion remove all the board members? Discussion, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and also would like to discuss and consider uh, approving the relocation of the economic development offices and the board uh, of director, di directors meeting location. Second. Okay, if we, if we remove all the board members, EDC can't work. Okay. Um, I mean, you just, it's just for good. And I also would like to um, discuss and take action on the Crockett Economic Industrial Development bylaws. In addition to um, meeting with the um, attorney for litigation purposes um, in executive session to get updated um, and to discuss the litigation, upcoming litigation. There's no discussion item on that yet. Yes, sir. Okay, well, we just need to get, I guess, yeah. meet, we meet, have a meet with them. Okay, so yeah. we just we basically need to. No, I mean, that kind of get an update of what we're there. Have to give it to us. We're state. nowhere yet on any of that. No. Okay. So who? There's no. We don't have an attorney or anything like that. Yes, there's there's been one appointed, but okay. that has not gone to court yet. So there's no okay. discussion. So who who to appointed their attorney? TML, our insurance. Okay. Have the council doesn't have any say over if we want to accept that attorney or not? No. 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 I mean, that's what, that's what, no, unless you want to pay. It's a TML insurance appointed attorney, unless we pay for it out of our own pocket. Yes, well, we need to be updated by that attorney. Yeah, we they, need will, to they will, but there's nothing to update yet. They currently, we have not even replied to the court yet. So okay, there's nothing so to we need yet. some type of, well, we need to understand where we, where we the understanding of the procedures, the protocol. Absolutely. When they yes, give them to us. And we will. Yes, ma'am. They'll okay. give us As soon as we have them. something from the Okay, do we people. have a name of the attorney? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can we get that? Um, so when, I mean, so can you direct me on when we'll be able to meet with just? As soon as there's something to present to council. They will, okay. permit, they will meet they with will us. They will come in. Meet with okay, okay. So, um, also the bond issue that we discussed as well. I'm researching that. Okay, yeah. perfect, okay. Yes, sir, I think that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Like I said, uh, your request, some of it would be phased according to 
it'll be looked at to make sure that it's has the right proper wording. Yes, ma'am. I just okay. I'll, yeah. I'll it so it'll right. be looked at, you know, before we put it on the agenda. It will okay. be looked at by the lawyer. We always run it by. I mean, attorney. Okay. But it won't be an issue with placing those items. Some of the I mean, they might be phrased differently, okay, but it fine. would be some items, but okay. and they would be re. The language. Okay. 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 I got this one. So that's. I mean, that's. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, do we have? Was it the last item on our agenda? Somebody I'm else. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second that motion. <laughs> the move second. <laughs> Talk to more people today. Oh, Lord bless. It really did. I mean, because really just to hear the things.